We are going to bring on Yaakov Shapiro, an international speaker, scholar, and pulpit rabbi for 30 years, now emeritus. Uh, after graduating high school at age 16, Rabbi Shapiro dedicated himself to full-time study of religion, becoming the protege of some of the most well-regarded rabbinic scholars in orthodoxy. He's written several books, and his most recent book is The Empty Wagon, Zionism's Journey from Identity Crisis to Identity Theft a 1,381-page treaty on the differences between Judaism and Zionism. So without further ado, let us welcome to the show Rabbi Yaakov Shapiro. Thank you for having me, Katie. Of Glad course, thank you here. for coming on. Yes. What is Zionism, and when did it start? The definition of Zionism is something that no matter what you say, various Zionists are going to tell you, well, that's not Zionism. Zionists will tell you that Zionism is the right for the Jews to do this or that. But that's not what Zionism is. None of the founding fathers of Zionism said that. Rather than define Zionism in a way that you're going to be arguing about the definition, I would say that all Zionisms, no matter what type or who's giving the definition, presuppose two things. The first thing all Zionisms presuppose is that the Jewish people are a nationality. We're a nation. We're not just a religion, we're a nation. Now you can define a nation as a race as they used to do in the olden days. You can define a nation however you want, but it's not just a religion the way Jews looked at themselves for thousands of years. Jews are a nationality, and two, Israel is the state of that nationality. Those are the two things that are contained in all definitions of Zionism. Now, both of those are false and also anti-Semitic. First, I want to give a little introduction as to what Zionism is. Um, the topic is that I'm here tonight to discuss is why Zionism is anti-Semitic. And then I would like very much to submit a path forward for people right. to actually, something actionable that we could do. Perfect. So first, once upon a time, the Jewish people um, looked at themselves, well, let's go back 2,000 years when the days of the temple before the Romans kicked us out of uh, Jerusalem and uh, the Holy Land. The Jews looked at themselves as a people who were enjoined by God to fulfill the Torah. That's all they were. Um, the story of the Jewish people is very simple. It involves three things. God gave the Torah to the Jews. That's it. Those three things. God gave the Torah to the Jews. Any distortion of those three things, of I, any of those three things, uh, makes another religion. Uh, the ancient idol worshippers changed the def, uh, changed the concept of God. They had uh, totem poles and things like that. That's why they were idol worshippers. The Christians changed the Torah. They have a New Testament. The law changed, and the Zionists changed the third factor there to the Jews. The Zionists changed the concept of what the Jews are, just as the pagans changed God and a uh, monotheistic God, a first cause, and uh, something that's completely unphysical into a totem pole, and the Christians added something to the law. They completely changed the law. They said it was superseded. Um, the Zionists changed the concept of the Jewish people. The concept of the Jewish people used to be just as I said, and it is succinctly uh, stated by about a thousand years ago, uh, Rabbi Sadia Gon, he lived in Egypt, and his statement was so well known that Theodore Herzl even quotes it in his diary without even knowing who said it. He just quotes it. It means in English, we are only a people, we are only united by the Torah. That's it. Nothing else unites us. If you remove the Torah from the Jewish people, there's no difference between the Jews and anybody else. Right? There were no bagels and locks even in those days. So there was absolutely no difference between the Jews and anybody else. Now, there are Jews in, back in the olden days that uh, didn't want to be Jews, and they perhaps converted to another religion. It was very unusual in those days to find a secular person all, at all, and certainly not anybody that identified as a secular Jew. It may be that Benedict Spinoza was a quirky exception. Depends who you ask. But then came the Emancipation and the Enlightenment, and the Jews were no longer relegated to ghettos and they were allowed to go to universities and they were allowed to be out in society and there were many jews that said you know what i don't want to be religious i don't want to be part of this um studious righteous pious uh, priestly kind of people that's what the jews were 
uh, we want to be regular Russians, we want to be regular Germans, we want to be regular Frenchmen. And that the problem is it didn't work. Long story short, there were persecutions, uh, anti-Semitic persecutions against them. 1881, the pogroms in Russia started a, a cascade of terrible uh, pogroms that killed many, many Jews. And the the secular Jews, the assimilated Jews, had a kind of an identity crisis. Um, they didn't want to be Jews because they actually, and this is important to know, they looked at the Jews as ugly. It wasn't just that they didn't want to be religious because they wanted to, I don't know, tell, talk on the telephone on, on Saturday. Rather, they looked at the Jews as ugly. I'm going to give you a, a couple of quotes over here. Vladimir Jabotinsky, one of the early Zionists, one of the founding fathers of Zionism, who the Benjamin Netanyahu considers his mentor. He's really a mentor of his father, but he considers him a student of Jab himself, a student of Jabotinsky. Quote, I have no doubt that I am a Zionist because the Jewish people is a very nasty people and their neighbors hate it and they are right. Its end will be a Bartholomew night. Yosef Chaim Brenner, one of the big Zionist intellectuals, said, quote, if the tables were turned and others were like the Jews, wouldn't we have good cause to hate them as well? Uri Tzvi Gr Greenberg shares with us his opinion as to why religious Polish Jews uh, were persecuted, quote. Those loathsome Jews are vomited out by any healthy collective and state, not because they are Jews, but because of their Jewish repulsiveness. Ben-Gurion referred to Jews as parasites. Some statements by Adolf Hitler calling Jews parasites, and Ben-Gurion, it's hard to know who said which. They, they absorbed the attitudes of the anti-Semites. They didn't like the Jews, so they didn't want to be them. So no problem. You go assimilate, do what you want. The problem... Russians and the Germans and the French told the assimilated Jews basically, you're Jewish and we're going to persecute you anyway as you're Jewish. Now they, now they had a, a resultant identity crisis. They said, well, we don't want the identity of the Jews, but they won't let us have the identity of the Gentiles. So what do we do? There are various different theories. The theory of Zionism was the dominant one, and that's the one that, uh, dom that, that's the one that ended up successful at the end. The theory of Zionism was we're going to change the Jews from a religion into a nationality. The problem is that the, and the nationalism was a, a big thing in those days, and it helped a lot of people, like people from the Balkan states, and it was like a big thing. Every hundred years, there's you know another thing, another ism. Natural nationalism was a thing going on. Those things. So that's going to be the cure for the Jews. Once the Jews become nationals, and once they become like normal people, like nationals, that was in those days what normal people were considered. Uh, that was considered normal people. There won't be any more anti-Semitism. No one's going to hate them. Everyone's going to love them. They won't. Everything will be fine. The problem is the Jews were not a nationality. They had no characteristics of a nation. No land. No no common land, language, or culture. Jews are from many lands. They spoke many languages, and they have many cultures. They still do to this day. They had no flag. They had no national anthem. There wasn't even a symbol of the Jews. The Star of David was not really a symbol of the mm -hmm. Jews. It is a religious symbol, but it, it, it's not the symbol of the Jews. It doesn't have any holiness. You're allowed to throw it in the garbage. It, it is meaningful. It, there are a lot of different explanations, the simplest being that it points up, down, into the four corners of the earth. It represents God. Mm. I mean, he's all over, right? Up, down, and four, north, south, east, west. That's, that's what it represents. A three-dimensional compass, that, that's all. And the Jews, everything about the Jews is just a relationship to God. So the Zionists wanted to change that. Uh, they wanted to fix the Jews. The Jews were disgusting. They're going to make them better. The way they're going to make them better is by giving them national characteristics. So uh, there's, uh, by way of analogy, let's say I wanted to change the Christians into baseball players. And not, I didn't want to convince them, you know, give up your Christianity, become a baseball player, because they probably won't cooperate. What I would uh, do better, uh, what I would uh, prefer to do is to convince the Christians that they always were baseball players, that Jesus was like the founder of the baseball league, and uh, they always were baseball players. And these things, this religion business and God and, and Trinity and Jesus and Messiah, that's all stuff that got messed up. You got messed up. That's not real Christianity. And, and what I would do is I would give the Christians bats and balls to play with. I would make them pinstripe uniforms that says Christians across the chest, give them a 
stadium to play in and say, now you're the real Christians. If you have a good education, starting from little kids, and you bring them up this way, before you know it, in a generation or two, uh, Christians were always supposed to be baseball players. And this religion stuff was just nonsense that they, they got into their head once upon a time. And that's what the Zionists wanted to do to the Jews. Let's give them a language. So they created modern Hebrew. Jews haven't spoken modern Hebrew. And there was no modern Hebrew to speak. Right. And the Hebrew language, the ancient Hebrew language, has a, a few hundred uh, root words. It's not a speakable language. Um, even when we did speak it, it wasn't a national language of the Jewish people, meaning that's not what united us into a nationality the way other languages do. So we're going to make modern Hebrew. And they had modern Hebrew before they had a state. Uh, it was not an easy thing, but they did it. Uh, easier was to make a flag. They made their Israeli flag. It was there before Israel was. Um, they made a culture. They changed their names from European names to Middle Eastern sounding names. The hardest thing for them to get was a country, which they finally got as well. And the idea is we're going to teach the Jews that the Jews are always a nationality. Your aspirations to return to the Holy Land was not for a messianic renewal of the world, a new spiritual revelation of God where the wolf will lay down with the lamb. No, really, it's a political self-determination that you always wanted. And that's why they chose Israel as opposed to everywhere else. The Zionists could have had land in many, many places. There was Uganda plan, Argentina, various different places, but they turned that down because they figured in order to get the Jews to cooperate, in order to formulate this gaslighting, that's what it was, to educate the Jews, they had to fit their own, they, they had to lend artificial Jewish flavoring and artificial Jewish coloring to their completely non-Jewish movement. So they took the old Jewish aspirations, this, as we say in our prayers, next year in Jerusalem. And we, they say, oh, you know what we meant always? What we meant was, we're going to have national self-determination in Jerusalem. That's not what we ever meant. And I'll tell you a secret, um, Katie, that they don't tell you. The people in Jerusalem today also say next year in Jerusalem. Okay. And the reason they say it is because the Jerusalem that we're praying for is not the Jerusalem that exists today. It's it's a, a concept, more of a place. It's in a place, but it's nothing like what we have today. All everything about Judaism is spiritual: God, angels, law, miracles, Moses, splitting of the sea. That's Ju that's Judaism. They wanted to take Judaism and change it into a political thing, a political identity. That's right. Zionism. And 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 really, the goal of Zionism, the ultimate goal of Zionism is to purify the Jews and to rehabilitate the Jews and to rebrand the Jews such that uh, instead of being people like me, which everybody hates because they have had anti-Semitism throughout the centuries, people are going to become like Benjamin Netanyahu or Ariel Sharon, who everybody loves, right? That was their plan. Didn't work out that way, but that was their plan. They're going to win gold medals. They're going to win Eurovision contests. They're going to be normal people. They're going to have an army. And of course, that was the main thing that they hated about the Jews. Right. The Jews are big pacifists. They ran rather than fought. We don't fight. We don't like wars. We don't like fighting. Uh, we, we, we don't have places, uh, you know, like the Alamo is a place of a battle. We don't even have, we have all over the Old Testament, there are battles and wars all over the place, but there is no holy site of a war. We don't have any such places. Uh, I was on another uh, show a while ago and somebody in the comments later said, what do you mean? What about Masada? Yeah. Masada is a Zionist invention. Masada meant nothing to the Jews for this very reason. It was the site of a bunch of bar yonim there. They were uh, thugs, actually. They were kicked out of Jerusalem by the rabbis, and they hold uh, themselves up in that fortress. We, it was nothing to us. A uh, guy, uh, some couple of Zionists, archaeologists, they decided to create these type of things. And that's exactly what the Zionists did. They made a new Jewish history. They made a new Jewish uh, personality and new Jewish, new Jewish aspirations and everything. And that's Zionism. And their goal is, their goal was, it was like a supersessionist uh, religion where they say, we're the real Jews. You know, plenty of people say they're the real Jews. They're the black Hebrews that say they're the real Jews. There's Christian supersessionists say the real Jews, but with the Zionists, it is different. I say the Orthodox Jews are the uh, real authentic type Jews and everybody else is in violation. Okay. Everybody uh -oh. says that. Don't worry about it. Uh, you, the we'll work it out it later. Is. Yeah. It will yeah. work it out. It is what it is, Katie. However, however, these guys did something different that nobody, nobody, none of the Jewish deviant movements ever did. And actually no country in the world ever did. They said that, you know what? We're not saying that we're the real Jews and the Orthodox are not, although there are those who have said it. 
uh, rather, we are the representative of all the Jews in the world. Jews are a nationality, whether you're religious or you're not religious, whether you're uh, a black Hebrew or a, 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 or a uh, Jew for Jesus, whatever they want to say. But we are the state of those Jews. All those Jews comprise a nationality. And just like in the United States of America, there are people of different races, different cultures and things. But there's a country. It's, they are Israel is the country of the Jews. OK, now it's important to know that there's no country in the world that does this. Every single country in the world is the country of their citizens, meaning here in the United States of America, everybody in the United States of America came from somewhere, unless you're a Native American. My family's from Poland. Everybody came from somewhere. We're less than 300 years old, but we're all Americans. A person comes to America, they become a citizen, they live the, the life of an American, and eventually they assimilate into a, a, they become American. Same thing with Italy. They become Italians in France. You become French. In Israel, there's a, by Israeli law, there is no Israeli nationality. There's only a Jewish nationality. There's Israeli citizenship, but no Israeli nationality. Israel's nation state law says that only Jews have the right to self-determination in Israel. Nobody else. And this means two things. Thing number one, that I, a Jew of Polish descent who never lived in Israel, don't plan on living on it in Israel, have nothing to do with Israel, don't want anything to do with Israel, they claim that they're my state. Benjamin Netanyahu says that he's my prime minister. Um, that that's what they think that they are the leaders of the jews and they say it's all over the place now uh, to the point where jonathan pollard actually now this is completely anti-semitic absolutely anti-semitic this is the dual loyalty trope to the point where jonathan pollard do we have that article pollard jews will always have dual loyalty and should consider spying for israel jonathan pollard said that he would actually advise young jews to spy for israel American Jews to spy on America against America for Israel. Now, this is an absolute anti-Semitic dual loyalty trope. And but he that, was a spy. He was a spy. Just for yes, people was, who don't know who he is. He, yeah. he was a spy for Israel. He was convicted and uh, he served his sentence and uh, moved to Israel. And now he's a hero over there. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's a villain. He spied on his own country for money, actually. But uh, Israel, the Zionists say, well, he saved a lot of lives. He didn't save a lot of lives. He actually put American lives in Russia at risk. And, you know, Israel has a tendency to do that, to justify things by saying it's necessary for saving lives. But that's what Jonathan Pollard says. Israel claims to be my state. There is no other Bad country hair in the too. world. What? Bad hair also. Less Bad offensive, hair. though. Less problematic, yeah. 